Hey Leisure Gamers, we're making a carbonara today, which is a pasta dish based on cream, cheese, egg yolks, and bacon. It's really good and it might even become one of your staple dishes after work, so let's get to it. For equipment, pull out your cutting board and knife. You'll need a large skillet or pan to cook the sausage, asparagus, and bacon. A large pot to cook the pasta and some sort of strainer to drain it. Start by washing the asparagus and trimming the ends. Then cut the asparagus into about 2 inch sized pieces. If you're not interested in asparagus, substitute another vegetable. Zucchini, summer squash, or even broccoli will do the trick. Break apart the bulb of garlic into individual cloves. Then crack each clove with the flat side of your knife. After removing the papery skin, mince the garlic. Remove the bacon from the package and slice into about half inch pieces. You can cut multiple strips at once, but you might have to press firmly to cut through the fat. Slicing bacon is much easier if cold, so keep it in the refrigerator until needed. Separating eggs can be a little tricky and can be done a few different ways. We're going to use the active skill of egg separation quick method. Crack an egg into the palm of your hand and lightly drop the yolk from one hand to the next, letting the egg whites pass through your fingers and fall into the bowl. Once clean of whites, place the egg yolk into a separate bowl. This technique is the fastest and requires the least amount of finesse. There are other, more delicate ways to separate eggs, but using the quick method is appropriate for this recipe. Add the measured amount of cream into the bowl with the egg yolk and whisk together until smooth. Then add the shredded parmesan cheese and whisk together again. Begin to heat a skillet over medium heat. When hot, add in the bacon. Cook until the bacon begins to crisp and has rendered its fat. The cured pork flavor is an important aspect to carbonara. Traditionally, carbonara is made with pancetta or even pork gels. If interested, you can find pancetta at most grocery stores, usually in the deli section by the imported meats. Once cooked, remove the bacon from the pan. Reserve the grease and add in the ground Italian sausage. Cook until the sausage is well browned. It will be difficult to break apart the sausage completely when it's still raw, but near the end of cooking, the sausage should break apart into smaller chunks easily. While you wait for the sausage to cook, heat a large pot of water over high heat. Add enough salt to the water until it tastes as salty as the ocean. This helps increase the boiling point of the water, and it will also season the pasta. Once boiling, add in the pasta, stir, and bring back to a boil. Once the sausage is browned, add in the asparagus or the vegetable that you decided to use. Cook for a few minutes until the vegetable is about halfway done, and then add in the minced garlic. Stir for a few more minutes until the garlic smells fragrant. Don't overdo it though, as garlic can burn if cooked for too long. Add a bit of salt or black pepper and remove from heat while the pasta finishes cooking. Cook the pasta for about one minute less than the recommended time on the back of the package. Drain and set aside briefly. If possible, reserve some of the pasta water as you're straining. Place the now empty pot back on the stove, but away from the hot burner. It's important while performing this next step that the pot isn't over direct heat. Add in the sausage and the vegetable mixture, then the pasta. Pour in the egg yolk mixture, stirring quickly to evenly coat the pasta with the sauce. This step utilizes the passive skill of carryover cooking. The residual heat from the pasta will cook the egg without scrambling it, making for a smooth and rich sauce, while the cheese will melt and the cream will help coat all the pasta. Having knowledge of carryover cooking will help you make more informed decisions. Earlier, we made use of the passive skill without even mentioning it. Remember when we moved the sausage and asparagus off the heat? Well, we knew it was about 75% done, and we wanted the asparagus to stay crispy while we waited for the pasta to finish cooking. We knew the asparagus would continue cooking and would finish when we combined it with the hot pasta. The next time you try out a recipe, keep in mind how much the food will continue cooking once removed from heat. As a final step, add in the cooked bacon and a bit of the reserved pasta water if the sauce is too thick. Serve the carbonara right away, ensuring that each portion has a good mixture of pasta, meat, and vegetable. As a special garnish, top with additional parmesan cheese, fresh herbs, or maybe even some sun-dried tomatoes. Alright Leisure Gamers, if you have any questions or suggestions, let us know. Now go try out your new skills.